What's up, Giants fans? Back at it with another New York Giants video. And in this video, I want to recap Big Blue's toughest loss of the season thus far. 28-3 loss to the Philadelphia Eagles, falling to 2-5 and five on this young season. Seven weeks in, folks. Before I get into this abysmal loss and some of my takeaways from it, friendly neighborhood reminder, if you want to catch more daily Giants content, you can check us out below on Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube at Big Blue Avenue. We appreciate everybody's support. And unfortunately, it's been a tough start to the season, but I'm here to take you through it and talk about some of the things that really um, hit my mind watching the Giants out there on the field this week look absolutely horrific. But first and foremost, losing to the Eagles is never fun. Uh, losing to an old friend is also unfun. Saquon Barkley dominated this game. From the second quarter onward, broke out for a nice 55-yard run early, set up his first touchdown that put the Eagles up on top, 7-0. And he had 176 rushing yards on the ground with one score on the game. Nick Sirianni sat most of the starters in the fourth quarter. Otherwise, Saquon probably could have rushed for a career high and got over 200 yards. Now, before I talk about anything else about this game, I want to make something very clear. My stance on Saquon Barkley remains the same. Giants made the right decision to move on from him. My opinion is that Saquon is running this well because he's running behind the Eagles offensive line. Now, let's be fair here. No Jordan Mailata. I believe Mekhi Becton got hurt as well, and they were playing guys out of position. I think Fred Johnson was left tackle. They had Becton at right guard, and then they eventually replaced Becton with Tyler Steen. And, you know, Cam Jurgens' new center this year. So Dickerson and Lane Johnson were the only two starters in this game that were still in the same spots that they were when these two teams met last season. However, the Eagles still have a better offensive line than the Giants at this time, especially without Andrew Thomas. Um, and I think that's why Saquon runs so well behind this offensive line, because you have guys like Dickerson and Johnson that execute good one-on-one -on -one blocks. They push up the field well. They protect Jalen Hurts. They create running holes for Saquon Barkley, who can still execute beautiful jump cuts. And he hasn't lost a step in this game. My thing is this, right? Look what Tyrone Tracy did a couple weeks ago. He ran for over 100 yards. I personally just don't think you have to be paying a guy like Saquon, 27-year-old with injury history, 14, 13 and a half to 14 million dollars a year. Um, again, nothing to do with Saquon the player. Everything to do with the nature and business of the modern NFL and where the Giants are headed as a franchise. They invested a lot of money in their quarterback. It's bit them in the butt. He sucked. He's failed to perform and play to expectations. And I think that's where you got to start with Daniel Jones. You know, this, this Giants offense tally just 119 total yards, uh, the lowest total in 25 years. Absolutely embarrassing. Giants are now 0-4 at home this season. Daniel Jones' stat line, it was ugly, 14 of 21 for 99 yards. He was sacked seven times, benched in the fourth quarter for Drew Locke, along with a couple other players. You know, the game was out of hand. I don't want to say this was a passing of the torch. It wasn't. Dable came out and said Daniel Jones will be the starter in week eight on Monday Night Football when they head to Pittsburgh to take on the Steelers. But Jones needs to play better. Um, as bad as Jones has been, guys, Drew Locke is worse. I mean, you saw it. Fourth quarter, tough position to come in, you know, not having a week's full preparation with the ones, but he had two fumbles. Luckily, he didn't lose either of them. Um, but yeah, and I think part of it, too, the lackluster quarterback play attributes to this. There is no contingency plan with Andrew Thomas being out. They went and they started Josh Azudu at left tackle. And, you know, they said, oh, Ivan Neal's been practicing at right tackle at the backup spot. BS, you drafted the guy seventh overall. If he was that good, he'd be starting at one of the tackle spots on Sunday, and you would have moved the Luminar to left, or you would have started Evan Neal at left, which I think the right decision for the Giants would have been a Luminar at left and Neal at right, or Zudu at right. One of those guys at right, not at left. I think your best tackle should be playing on the left side because that's where the quarterback can't see as much. That's his blind side. So, again, at the end of the day, the Giants offense has to play better. Over the last two games, their longest play was 15 yards. And that's why I paused, because it's astronomically bad. Um, there's no explosive plays. Every time they do, it's either an overthrow or dropped pass like Jalen Hyatt on Sunday. Um, 
and it's tough. It, it's really, really tough. Um, you know, Jalen Carter had a field day. He had two sacks. Nicobe Dean had two sacks and four quarterback hits. Nolan Smith, Josh Sweat, Jalex Hunt, and Bryce Huff all got in the mix with a sack apiece as well. Eagles defense had eight sacks, seven of them, seven of them on Daniel Jones. Another thing, too, the Giants could not establish the run game. Devin Singletary back in a timeshare now with Tyrone Tracy Jr. The Giants had just 76 rushing yards on 18 attempts. Now, granted, the Giants were put in a negative game script once they got towards the later stages of the first quarter, so the Giants did not have as many opportunities to run the football due to the score on the field. And that's credit to guys like A.J. Brown. You know, back healthy, he scored a touchdown, had a nice play. The Eagles' offense was three for three in the red zone. They were really, really good. And Kenneth Gainwell ran the ball, too, outside of Saquon. He had 56 yards on 13 carries. And Jalen Hurts, man, Jalen Hurts, he only threw the ball 14 times. There was no reason to throw the football. He counted for three touchdowns, two rushing, one passing. So the Giants' defense all day could not stop the run. So by the time the offense got the ball, of course you have to air it out. I mean, there's really no other choice. The Eagles made the Giants one-dimensional, and there's really no other way to put it. Um, pressure was in Jones's face all day. Malik Neighbors had just four catches for 41 yards on eight targets. Neighbors mentioned post-game that he was open. Um, again, he doesn't know what's going on back there at the quarterback spot, and I can't say I blame him. You know, uh, I agree with him. It's egregious. It's a problem. Uh, Wandale, typical stat line for him, six catches for just 23 yards, absolutely horrendous. You cannot have 23 yards when you're catching the ball six times. Um, the one bright spot of this game, though, folks, is that the Giants' defense still leads the NFL in sacks. They had five, uh, two of them coming from all-pro Dexter Lawrence, uh, now leads the NFL with nine sacks at the defensive tackle position. Brian Burns, Aziz Ojolari, and Taman Fox each had one. Again, Kayvon Thibodeau missed the second straight week. Hopefully he's back for week eight. Um, so that was the lone bright spot of this game. The Giants were able to get pressure on Jalen Hurts. They were able to exploit the interior of the Eagles offensive line with Cam Jurgens, Makai Becton, slash Tyler Steen, and Burns had a decent day against Fred Johnson at left tackle. Now, what was concerning is that the Giants gave up big plays, whether it was in the run game or in the pass game later on. And again, majority of these sacks, folks, came in the first quarter. So let's not act like they were getting the hurts all day. They were not. Um, Deontay Banks, furious with him, definitely showed a lack of effort out there. Didn't really make tackles at times that he should have. He even admitted to it at one point on the field. It was abysmal. Um, it just really sucks, and I can't even tell you that the special teams was good because our starting kicker and punter to start the season were both out. You know, Jamie Gillen's still sidelined with a groin, hamstring, whatever he's dealing with, and then Graham Gano. Um, it was Matt Hack again and Greg Joseph. Matt Hack had 11 punts for 517 yards. If your punter is punting for over 500 yards, you might as well say you have the worst offense in the NFL. It's that bad. And this past week, the Giants did. I'm not saying cumulative for the season. It's been a bottom five offense this season. But this past week, it was the worst in the NFL. Um, more embarrassing to me personally than the Minnesota Vikings loss. And seeing the Eagles fans take over MetLife is not fun. Um, you know, I know there's some Eagles fans that commented on my last video. You guys saw my replies. Uh, yeah, I like to consider myself unbiased, but... At the end of the day, I still don't think Jalen Hurts is a great quarterback, and that's why I thought the Giants could keep this competitive. We knew Saquon was going to eat. We knew that. But, again, Jalen Hurts only had to throw the ball 14 times. That's a credit to the Eagles offense. Kellen Moore, give him a lot of credit. Nick Sirianni, give him a little bit of credit. You know, it's not like their coaching is great either. Their play calling could improve. So, you know, we'll see what happens there. Also, a couple other revenge games. Nick Gates, Jack Stoll got in the game a little bit. Stoll had a couple key blocks on some Saquon runs. And I think the biggest thing you take away from this game is the Giants are now 1-10 under Joe Shane and Brian Dable against the Eagles and the Cowboys in the NFC East. It's a problem. The Giants are 0-4 at home. They're 0-3 in the division. The best they could finish in the division this year is at 500. 
and that's if they beat each of the three teams they've already lost to. And I don't see that happening. I could easily see the Giants going 1-5, and 0-6 oh in the NFC East this season. Now it leads me to ask you the question, how do I feel about Brian Dayball and Joe Shane? I still have belief in them. I disagree with some of the draft picks Joe Shane has made, but remember in 2022 the Giants still had a lot of the previous regime scouting department in there, like um, – you know, Kevin Abrams' people with Dave Gettleman. I know Abrams is still with the organization, but with the Gettleman and Reese people, there was still a lot of that in there before Joe Shane cleaned house on that. Again, there's still a few holdovers, but majority of it is Shane's people now. Um, so the 23 and 24 drafts have certainly been better than what was produced out there in 2022. Um, I'm just thinking, too, it's not even that the Giants are losing to these teams. It's the fact that they're getting blown out. They're they're not competing well, right? Uh, the Dallas game was close, sure. Washington was close. That we gift wrapped to them by you know Dable not having a kicker that week, a hundred percent healthy kicker. At the end of the day, it's you got to play better. And I think if you know Brian Dable wants to keep his job in twenty twenty five and beyond, you know I just think the Giants have to be more competitive down the stretch. And I think they will be. I think Dable will keep his job at this time. My opinion might change as we get later on in the season. But Dable and Shane, again, this is a big, deep mess. The Giants have had to clean up. They still don't have their quarterback in place. I'm not saying Daniel Jones is awful. I know there's still some Daniel Jones apologists and defenders out there. I don't know why, but there is. Um, I respect that. I don't agree with it. But at the end of the day, the Giants will not be a Super Bowl contender until he is no longer the starting quarterback of this team. And I love Daniel Jones. I've been pro Jones throughout the course of his career, but I've had enough. There comes a point in time where you have to play better football. You have to make better reads. And I think the Giants ruined this guy's success any chance that he had. His mobility, his injury history, his deep ball, his pocket presence, his awareness, his spatial awareness, it's all gone downhill since he's been drafted in 2019. That's not 100% his fault, but he should take the bulk of the blame. He's making $40 million a year. I'm sick and tired of it. Um, now, quickly, here's some roster moves. But I know that was a lot, folks. I had to rant a little bit there. You know, losing to the Eagles is never fun. Giants made some roster moves so far in the early stages of Week 8. Boogie Basham has been waived. We'll see if he gets brought back on the practice squad. I am not sure. The Giants have been elevating Tamon Fox over the past couple of weeks with Thibodeau being out. So I'm intrigued to see if they want Fox on the 53 and possibly get Boogie back on the practice squad. Uh, Armand Watts, defensive tackle, they signed to the practice squad this past week, uh, has been elevated to the 53-man roster. And if you guys remember, folks, the Giants traded for Boogie Basham at the beginning of the 2023 season. They gave up a seventh-round draft pick in 2025 with Boogie. I'm sorry, they got a seventh-round pick in 2025 with Boogie from Buffalo, and they gave, it, they gave up a 2025 sixth-round pick. Um, you know, we'll see what happens, but Boogie Basham uh, just played a one game this season, not great stats as a giant um, over the past two years, more of an edge four bubble roster guy, camp body, whatever you want to call him. But Watts, a guy who – could possibly get some reps on the interior because you have Dexter Lawrence and Raheem Nunez Roches, but behind them is horrific. You have Jordan Riley who got pushed and eaten alive this past week. A lot of Saquon's big runs, folks. If you watch the tape and the film, Dexter was not on the football field. Big problem. Uh, it was Jordan Riley in the interior, and he was getting absolutely slugged. So I think it's important to bring a veteran. Armand Watts has experience with the Minnesota Vikings, who – Giants defensive line coach Andre Patterson came from the Minnesota Vikings, so there is a tie there. I think he'll know how to play under his former position coach. So, yeah, I think this is definitely an upgrade from Boogie Basham, even though they play slightly different positions. Watts on the interior defensive line, and Boogie Basham was an edge rusher. Um, other news, again, they're desperate. They can't go the rest of the season with Josh Azudu at left tackle. Daniel Jones will not make it through the rest of the season. And you want him to not because of, you know, loving Jones, because of what's after him, Andrew Locke. Um, I would argue DeVito might be the best option to quarterback come week 10 or 11. But we'll see what happens there. Uh, DJ Humphreys. 
former first round pick back in 2015, same draft as Eric Flowers, fun fact. Um, 30 years old, started 98 games for the Arizona Cardinals over the past nine seasons. They released him back in March. Um, he tore his ACL late last year, older player, new regime, right? With Monty Austin Fort, their new GM, Jonathan Gannon, new regime, no ties to him. They let him go. Not a bad player, a veteran who's coming off an injury history. And to be honest, if they sign him, there's a chance he could be starting at left tackle in week eight because it's a long week, right? The Giants don't play until Monday night. So the Giants might sign him on Wednesday, let's say, if they like what they, you know, hear or the way his injury or rehab is going. Give him some reps with the once, mix him in with a Zudu there, and then Dayball makes his the decision. I just don't think you can get by with a Zudu for another week. He was absolutely horrendous. He gave up multiple sacks in this game. And yeah, I'd rather take an injured Andrew Thomas over him. That's for damn, damn sure. All right, folks, let me know what you think in this video. Sam and I will be live on Thursday evening this week at 8 p.m. with Gabby Goody previewing the Giants and the Steelers Monday night football game. Game is a week later this week, so we're going to go live a week later due to the way the Giants um, practice schedule is. But if you like me and you like our content here at Big Blue Avenue, make sure to check us out on all of our social media channels below instagram twitter and youtube is where to best find us make sure to smash that like button subscribe ring the bell for notifications i will talk to you all very soon and without further ado let's turn this ship around folks still a lot of season left let's go big blue